Americans move west, section 4. Please be on note-taking study guide 123 and in your textbook on page 275. The first kind of thing we're going to talk about is roads and canals. Okay, that's how people moved west. Okay. The first thing the term is a turnpike. What is it? It's a type of privately built toll road and a much improved way to move people and goods to land. And so it moved people west, so people could move easily west, but it also moved people uh, goods back to the east as well. The next uh, term you need to kind of know is uh, Cordori Road, and this was made of uh, sawed off logs, and you can see a picture of that uh, above this, and it was important to allow roads to be near a marshy area. So before that, you had to go all the way around marshy areas. Um, this time you could, you could kind of go through, or at least near marshy areas. The next term is canal. This was important because it, it was a channel dug across land and filled with water. We saw a picture of that when we discussed our document, uh, document-based learning. Um, we saw a picture of the Erie Canal, or paintings, uh, rendering of that. And it was important because it allowed boats to reach more places, and you can carry a lot of goods uh, by boat than you can by, uh, back then, you know, horse-drawn carriage, basically. The next thing we're gonna, we're gonna talk about is uh, two major project, product, uh, projects. Uh, the first was a national road, and uh, this was road running from uh, Cumberland, Maryland to Valendia, Illinois in 1811. It was the first kind of national road across uh, the country. It, it was funded by the government and it connected the Midwest to the East. The next project is the Erie Canal. Um, this was a canal connected Lake, Lake Erie um, to the Hudson River. And this was very important as well um, because it started a canal building boom all across the East Coast. Okay, you could ship ship goods really quickly and cheaply, and it helped make New York City the richest city in the nation at that time. Uh, the next thing is the Missouri Compromise, and this is very important to understand, and we're going to talk about this more later when we talk about the buildup and the causes of the Civil War. Um, the real issue here was uh, the balance of power in the Senate between uh, free states and slave states. And if there's a quote on page 279 I'd like you to read real quick by Thomas Jefferson, um, this mo momentous question like a fireball in the night awakened and filled me with terror. I considered it at once as the knell of the Union. We have the wolf by the ears and we can neither hold him nor safely let him go. This was basically Thomas Jefferson saying this issue of slavery it's going to uh, be the end of our Union. It's going to pull the Union apart. And it it did in the Civil War, but the Missouri Compromise um, was actually it was proposed by Henry Clay, and he per persuaded Congress to approve the Missouri Compromise. So what this is is that Maine was admitted as a free state, and Missouri was admitted as a slave state, and so it kept the balance the same. And it basically said Louisiana territory north of Missouri's southern border was free of slavery. So anything basically in the Louisiana Purchase. Uh, that was north of that was if, was if when they became a, s a state would be admitted as a free state and anything south of that was basically going to become a slave state. Um, and uh, southern slaves also gained the right to pursue a fusion of slaves into free regions. So it wasn't enough for a slave just to escape into the north. They had to escape probably all the way to Canada. This Missouri Compromise was very important because it uh, postponed the issue of slavery coming to a head for another basically 40 years.